All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to look at Special League statistics. The Special League, as you can see, is about 13 hours away from being done. So around this time tomorrow, we will have been done for quite a bit. I guess I'm done playing because it resets, you know, when I'm at work in the early morning. So we're all set here. I'm at, that is the wrong thing. Here we go. I'm at 1483, uh, rank 1483 with 1417 points. I'm over the 1400 threshold which you need to be G1, and who knows how many people are playing, but I don't know. I don't know that I'm going to play anymore because I feel like if I play again and lose, I drop out. You know, you lose twice and you're really out versus this. 0.9 is still in versus one more win, you know, more in, but I think I'm just going to hang here. If I fall out, I fall out, whatever. Um, I played 64 matches. I won 43. I lost 21, so pretty good win rate, 67.2%. Um, Roughly around, I guess, last season where I did the same thing with more points. So interestingly enough, I mean, there's more, there's less people playing, right? I, I'm not sure exactly how that works because I have more points, but I'm further down. So whatever that means. Sorry for the great analysis, guys. Um, but I can't, I can't play a lot of matches. So, you know, I played 64 total over the two weeks, couple a day. I think I played four today. Um, I just, I don't have, I don't have time to play as many as I would like. And plus, you know, it kind of gets, kind of grates on you. Um... It's just, it's, you know, it can be tilting. <laughs> so what was nice about this season in a way was that it was basically the same as a regular season. So I was able to prepare for the next season as if it was real. And, you know, banning out a monster is not quite a realistic look. I know I banned out Diana a lot, Hathor a lot, and Wusa a lot, because those are the monsters that give me trouble. But on the other side, in theory, my monsters were, were being banned out at the same rate. So it was forcing me to adapt in that way. I know Gany got pre-banned quite a bit and, uh, you know, an occasional Oki and those are monsters I, I rely on. So what I wanted to do for this season stats is hopefully more helpful and a little different. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the monsters win rates for me. And it was just my win rate. And of course, it's relying on a lot of things, how I prioritize runes, my rune box, all that stuff. And we're going to look at how they're built as well. So I'm thinking that'll be useful versus just talking about them in a vacuum. Um, so let's get going. Varad, I don't think is indicative of um, anything. He's he played one match, I played him one match, and we won one match. He's my highest win rate, he played one match. Here's his stats. He's on Violent Broken. I guess you can't see that, but that rune is not, uh, it's a broken rune and it's not max. So there's my Varad. I don't think there's much to say there. If he's integral to your comp, you'll see more uh, action with him, but I didn't. Shayna was 2-0, and and I specifically, this is the one, I built my Shayna at free rune removal to be specifically a speed lead for RTA. She's the one with all the skill ups that I farmed like crazy. Um, she's on a broken set blade energy, you know, not ideal, but what I wanted her to be was fast, hit hard and be a little bit tanky. And I think I kind of achieved that. I mean, she's just under 20 K HP, 1800 ish uh, attack, defense right around a thousand, speed 231. I need all my damage dealers and especially my defense breakers right around 231. Crit damage, crit, you can see it there. Um, I didn't play her much, but when I did, it worked. Basically, the only time she went into matches was when it was clear I was being cleaved and I was picked out of one of my two speed leads. I run Sierra as a speed lead and I run Vanessa as a speed lead. Um, they picked one or the other and hey, I had Shayna as backup. Yes, so great. And it, it was very helpful. Having two speed leads and two fast monsters is the way to beat cleave. And I think, you know, especially in special league, there's a lot of people running cleave. So... You need to be prepared. You need to be prepared to see it more often than normal because people want to burn these wings. So Shayna, 2-0, good job. Didn't play her a lot. Azaria, basically the same thing as Shayna. Um, she was there for a speed lead. And the one match she played, she impressed me big time because not only was she a speed lead, the match went an extended amount of time and she, she controlled the match. I mean, you know, her skills are very control heavy, but she, you know, she did great. I was very, very pleased with her. So here are her stats. She's on Broken again. I wanted her on Revenge because that Revenge proc on skill one is just so nasty when it happens because it puts him to sleep. It gets her 50% bar. It's just so, so good. So that's Azaria. I'd like to pair this random will rune with something else here, but I don't have anything there. So um, she was again for a cleave. She worked out. Great job, Azaria. Okay, now on to the thing that blew my mind. Vanessa. 20 and 1, a 95% win rate. Wait, I was going to do that thing where I show you the stats at the same time. My bad. Here's my Vanessa. So this, every match I played, I kept updating her stats and I kept being, being like more and more surprised. Like 
there was a point where I was like, should I tell people about this? Like, this is a thing. This is a real thing for me. Um, so if you play me and this video is helpful to you, please don't pick Vanessa. You know, just let me have, let me have the Vanessa. That would be very nice of you. It got to the point where I was first picking Vanessa because I don't know why. Well, I mean, I kind of know why, but she was the linchpin of my success in Special League. I picked her 21 times out of my like 65 matches and she won all the time. I mean, I my final win, win differential was like 40 and 20. That's basically my Vanessa win differential. Basically, Vanessa carried me and everyone else treaded water. Blows my mind. So here's her stats. Um, I built her very tanky, so about 30k HP. Not nice attack. I wanted to have some offensive stats. So 1400 attack, 15, 1600 defense, 252 speed. The accuracy is the most important of those bottom four stats. The resist, not that important to me. But she's she, I can't really call this broken because it's triple set. Um, but this is my most efficient monster build of any monster. She's over 100% efficiency. And wouldn't you like to see those runes? Just trust that these are good runes. Um, and look at the stats. She's on HP. Uh, defense and speed and she just did fantastic she sets up all my uh, damage dealers with the defense break and she just lives forever so vanessa your speed lead everything about you you're great i i almost can't believe you did this well so i can't say enough about how impressed i was with vanessa and i think that's kind of the fun for me in keeping these stats is i can't trust my own recollection because i've had these monsters for four years and they've carried me through various parts of the game and they've won me you know, different RTA, Guardian, whatevers, and I have these emotions tied up in them that I can't, I shouldn't trust, especially not after a major balance patch. Like, so early and often in Special League, I would pick Molong first pick anyway because it's Molong, and he is everything for my success over the last couple uh, RTA seasons. But the stats keep me grounded. They make me realize where kind of the truth is in my monster box, um, and I'm gonna I'm going to follow that and try to try to continue playing based off of a statistical approach because why not you're still going to lose with most monsters at some point but you can't trust those losses you got to trust the overall uh balance of wins wins and losses so that's vanessa tessa three and one didn't play it a lot did much better um my tessa is slowly getting better it's at 220 speed one thing to note is the attack is up around 13 almost 1400 it's he's on an attack slot six and i'll show you real quick because it's ridiculous look at this rune 30 HP, 15 defense, 13 speed, and it's an attack rune. So you're welcome, Tessa. Violent Will, finally. Um, but, you know, he did a good job. Three and one. In terms of skills, I'm slowly getting those skills. He's missing five skills. Every single one of these skills has come from guild points or from fusing Veramoses. And that's how it's going to continue because I do not have double mons to spare for something that you can acquire, even if it's a pain. So three and one. Good job, Tessa. Now, next superstar is Josephine. I've always liked Josephine. And I've always thought Josephine was fantastic, but she, you know, she was Vanessa's uh, right-hand woman, basically. She kind of locked down a lot of wins, and when she goes off, she goes off in a way that's reminiscent of um, Ganny before the nerf, or I would say Diana, where it's just boom, 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 turn, turn, turn. But it's not offensive uh, like Diana, and it's not just procs like Ganny. It's she procs and then she gets stunned and then she cleanses and procs and then she violent procs and then she's back up again for the cleanse and it's great i love josephine josephine is a lifesaver uh for me so if you have one and you're interested in rta yes she's great um you know she's max skilled she's awoke <laughs> i have her on violent nemesis um this rune which you can't see is the reason why she's on nemesis 26 speed and it can't even get better that defense here i'll show you well, is that, I think I want a better defense grind on it. The 12% I'm happy with, but I need a better grind. I wouldn't mind like a legendary grind. Um, and then this rune is okay, but it's just begging for an upgrade. So if I can find anything better than that, um, she'll get even better. So she's on violent. Uh, 247 speed. I like her fast. I like her tanky. Um, she is, in light of the Molong and Gany nerf, she's one of my buff removers. In fact, she's usually the buff remover I pick first to see if they'll go double immunity because she's very, very reliable with her buff remove. Uh, especially one, 41%, she gets two shots at it. Um, you know, it's a 100% chance twice, which is really great. It's kind of like, I guess, how Gany used to be. Um, but the Provoke is also excellent. The Provoke has saved me several times. You know, if you if you absolutely have to... I, I, there was one match where I reset Perna, even though they had a Gany, and I provoked the Gany. I don't know how, though, because it was cross-element, but it worked. 
maybe it wasn't the brightest idea. Um, so they couldn't refresh the Perna, and then the Perna died. So it was risky, but it worked. So Josephine, great job, 16 and 6, 72% win rate. You're awesome. Okay, here's my first um, kind of exciting, tricky monster, and it is Eladriel. It is my crit damage Eladriel um, that I'm really excited about this season. It's still tanky enough to tank, I think. Um, you know, just shy of 1,700 defense, 25k HP, attack doesn't matter. 50% um, crit, 34% accuracy, and it's on Violent Broken. This rune that you, of course, can't see is 16% speed, 27% HP, accuracy, and crit rate. And this one is also fantastic. I mean, just look, that's everything you want. HP, crit rate, speed, flat defense. If I had a blade crit damage to go in the slot four, I think this build would be even more fantastic because not only would it be crit damage, but it would be high crit rate. Um, the thought here was, again, everything I'm doing this season is about compensating for the loss of Molong and Gany's uh, buff removing ability. So Eladriel has buff removal on her first skill. So that to me has always been nice. And I always want it to work. It's unfortunate it's a 75% chance. But, you know, it's a buff remove. It scales on defense, which is also nice. And so I thought, well, you know what's really uh, awful for me is Vela Jewels that are crit damage. Because they just chop right through you in endgame. They just murder you. And so I was thinking, well, I have a Vela Jewel. It's just, uh, it's wind element. It doesn't do immunity. But it can chop, you know. And... It's got revive and heal. So here, this is this is the build. Seven and three. So I don't use her a lot, but 70% win rate is higher than my average, which means she's helping, you know? There's a couple of matches where I've gone like Vanessa Eladriel, and it's sort of a Vanessa Triana, but a little bit pumped up based on that revive, which comes up pretty quick. And, you know, I haven't mixed in Ganny into that mix yet. I just haven't been able to make that work for some reason, but I wouldn't mind seeing Ganny chain refreshing Eladriel. And another reason she's great is she pairs really well with my Amelia, which we're going to get to in a second, who has the defense buff. So that's Eladriel. A lot of talk. Okeanos, 29. Um, kind of a, my bread and butter control pick. 68%. Still above. I should show him. Still above where you know my net win rate is. And this time I took him off accuracy slot 6 to make him a little tankier. He's now on flat HP, so apparently that's better. But it is a 27 speed flat HP, so he's a little bit faster. 289 uh, 30k HP, good defense, and yeah, he's doing great. 50% accuracy, not quite as good, I've noticed, you know, not quite as useful, but he's going to reset every Perna, you know, they don't have resist. He's going to reset, probably not, well, maybe Hathor's. It's pretty, it's good enough, right? I'm finding this to be good enough, so that's Oki. You know you know all about Oki. Bastet, it's kind of phasing out for me a little bit. Um, it's more of a cleave monster, but some people use her in other situations, but, uh, you know, I use her sometimes, and she's a cleave beater, which I enjoy. So she's doing a good job there. Those are her stats. Perna. Oh, Perna. You're my favorite. 42 times Perna has been picked. Only Amelia perked, picked more. And that's because I'm trying to get a sense of Amelia. So I'm picking her as much as possible. So the Perna's win rate is 66.6%, which is basically my win rate. Um, I think I've maxed Perna to the best of my ability. It's 30k HP. 18, almost 19, almost 7, 8, 9, 99 Wow, almost 1900 attack, if my adding is correct. It may or may not be. Um, speed 240, crit rate 85, and crit damage 170. So my Perna is great. It's violent blade. Good job, Perna. Keep it up. Jean. Um, Jean's an interesting one. I think she's really OP, but I think a lot of people know that. And I gave her my Molong runes, which to me means she should see play every match. She should be sort of a first pick, and I don't really think she is a first pick. Because there's too much double immunity. And if there's nothing that makes someone go double immunity faster than first pick Jean, uh, I found out. So 65% win rate, still great. Um, 164 speed. You can see the accuracy, 33%. HP is like 41, 42. Defense, 1300, something like that. She's on my best set. Violent Will. And Molong lost the best set to Jean. So that's Jean. Sierra got played a little bit, 7 and 4. Basically a cleave counter. I built her full YOLO damage because... If I'm going to counter your cleave, uh, I'm going to try to nuke through it. So you can see the attack there, the speed, accuracy is pretty good. I don't play her a lot. She's, I would say, easily counterable. And what happens is you you pick Sierra. Most people first pick Sierra, maybe. And then they pick Sierra counters. And then you start picking counters to Sierra counters. And then they just pick more Sierra counters. 
And so you're in this spot where you have Sierra, they let you have Sierra, and then they've got two to three Sierra counters, and you are stuck, is what it seems to be. So, But still a good win rate, because she's really good when she goes off. And that's... she's. I think she's best as a counter to Diana or Helena, because you put a bomb on a pony, and they do not want to switch at all, because they explode immediately. You know, especially, they're so squishy in human form, if they can't cleanse it, they switch and they die. So that's when I try to use her as a, as a pony counter. Triana, 7 and 4, 63% win rate. I don't use her as much as I should because Vanessa apparently is just awesome by herself. Um, but there's my Triana. She's on HP, HP defense. Super tanky. She's great. Um, her, the only thing that hurts her is when you go Vanessa, Triana, and they go reset control. And then she kind of just sits there because they kind of control your whole team. Ganny, I didn't play much at all. The Ganny nerf is. It's a it's it's real. Like I've got him on super fast runes, two ninety five speed. So he's just become another anti cleave monster for me. Kind of. I don't feel that comfortable picking him um, in a lot of situations because there's a lot of double immunity. And why wouldn't you run double immunity? You two of your biggest threats in Gany and Molong are gone. Uh, you know, so double immunity got stronger. The, you know, unfortunately you get bulwarked sometimes, which, you know, that's a nice counter. I don't happen to have, but my Ganny's not seeing as much play. Maybe it will. I feel more and more comfortable playing against Ganny's, which is probably part of the issue with uh, me wanting to play Ganny's. I'm like, I'll, I'll play a Ganny. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. I'll play, I'll play Ganny Hathor. I mean, I've played against it a couple times now because the Ganny part of Ganny Hathor is more about refreshing Hathor. And so you're kind of just dealing with Hathor, not dealing with Ganny stripping into Ganny, um, cooling you down blah 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 right all right molong still played quite a bit mostly early in the season 62 percent. he's under my average win rate but he's still winning oh i should show his runes he's on i would say maybe my third violent set something like that still pretty fast still pretty accurate it is no longer will it's now broken um you can see the broken runes there but those are the stats molong everybody knows what molong does he's molong garo i really wish i would play him more um i switched him to nemesis which has nerfed his damage a little bit. Here's him. He's on violent Vampire Nemesis. Nemesis, Nemesis. This rune I need to show you because, oh my gosh, this rune. It just needs defense switched out for attack. And defense is great, and I would love to buff up that defense. It's fine. But, oh my gosh, if I get, like, a legendary attack gem, I think I have a legendary attack enchant. Do I not? No, I guess. Yeah, I do. Right there. That is for Garrow. Like, there's other spots I could put him. Um, like, this rune could use it. You know, you can see there's a 6 on there. But that is for Garrow slot 4. I really want him to have that. And then maybe I could... This Nemesis rune is super nice for him. And then this one's okay. Um, but yeah. Anyway, when I play him, he tends to win more than he loses. So, yay. And, he, you know, you get in a spot where you don't have a specific damage dealer. Or he just looks perfect for what they're bringing. Um, but don't bring him into Pandas. That's bad. Don't bring him even into things like Diana because they'll just nuke through him. So he's a little more limited, but when he's not limited, he's he's a game winner. So good job, Garrow. All right, Amelia, my new hotness. Just pulled her from my transcendence. She was 60% win rate, so below my average by about 6%, but she was in so many matches, two-thirds of my matches. And I think I'll get a better sense of how to bring her in terms of teams, who to pair her with, the more I play her. And when she's when she's good, she's broken good. Like she will win a match for you if they don't plan for her. And what's really fun about her is if they bring one counter to her, you ban it. And if they don't ban her, you kind of win. Um, so that's nice. She gets banned. I think I, I've seen somewhere she's the highest percentage banned monster in the game, maybe? So if you bring her, you kind of have a good shot of getting to bring your other team of four. So that's nice. Um, you know, I, I get my Perna through a little bit more. I get, you know, other monsters through a little bit more. So I really enjoyed her. I still don't quite have a grasp on when I should be a pony. My, temp my temptation is to be a human forever because, hey, it's permanent immunity forever. And if you somehow slip through... I get a cleanse and defense buff. And she's tanky enough where even in human form, I don't feel like she's, you know, she's getting hit that bad. Um, and what's nice is when she's in human form, she scales her speed based on her HP. And her HP is really high. So I think her speed currently is 288. 
when in human form she's like 315 or something ridiculous i calculated out at one point but then immediately forgot it and just was like that's good i'll do that i like her on swift more than violent because i don't really switch her into person form anyway or into a pony form um she just sits in human form and just does great so amelia good job i will keep learning you um i appreciate everything you do uh okay so last few monsters I'm going to go through quickly, but I don't think there's any real um, need to. They're not particularly game-breaking. Here's my Elsharian. Tankier than usual, but look, he's on despair. Um, why not? I've only played him a couple times, but why not give him that one more thing to do? He's fast. He's not swift fast like he used to be, but he's, he's fast enough. He's a defense break, um, and now he can stun you sometimes, so that's kind of fun. We'll play with him more as the new season comes out. Antares is a very specific counter-build monster. Here's the stats. Played him a couple times to spare revenge. Um, I like him, but he's got a proc. He's he's gambling, basically. He's gambling against Diana. So they're gambling with their Diana, and you're gambling with your Antares. And if you win the gambling, you win. If you lose the gambling, you lose. But at least it's an option to beat Diana. There's sometimes no options. Um, and what's ni nice about him is when he cuts her, he takes her extra turn. So she's pow, 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 pow. She's just about to take another turn. He cuts in, and oh, she doesn't get another turn. Boom, 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 Antari's time, and she, in theory, she's dead or stunned or whatever. So, Antari's good job. Fran didn't use as much because she didn't get as good as stats or runes. Just a big old broken mess. Um, still fast, 250 speed. Attack kind of nerfed, but I might, might play with her more. I keep meaning to play with Ethna more down on the Ethna here. Um, two and three. She's another good buff remover. Um, there's a lot of good fire DPS out and about. And so, I don't know, I sometimes have issues bringing her into matches, but she's 95% crit, um, lots of defense, decent amount of HP, 271, if math is correct, um, speed, so that's crazy fast. I want to try to get her in more. And then I'll show you the other guys. Wind Barb, I built, but he's not max skilled, so I don't like to bring him places yet. Um, there's his stats. He's on Violent Broken. You can see the issue is there. And then those three. So need some need some barbs, please. Barbs, please. Um, Miang, same thing. And I'm going to get more into these units when we talk about my plans for the next season. But there's Miang. And then... Eh, I don't really use this. They're all in one. They didn't, they lost. You don't want to see those stats anyway. So, long story short, um, that's what's going on with my special league. Hope this was helpful. I think the showing the stats next to it is kind of nice because then you can get a sense of what build is achieving these win rates and for me that's something i would want to see so hope you guys enjoyed it and good luck for people finishing up special league and hopefully we'll get going on real rta here very soon so until next time guys take care